Today we're going to talk about collagen and how to boost collagen in your skin. Hi, Manuela Marcajani from Isomer Skin Care, and today we're going to talk about collagen and how to boost collagen. Collagen is a huge topic in skincare, and a lot of products talk about the importance of collagen or stimulating collagen. So, collagen is the most abundant protein of your skin. And when you have an abundance of collagen, when you're young and you have a lot of collagen, your skin is nice and juicy and smooth and plump because collagen is that element of the connective tissue that when plentiful, it fills in all the spaces, it retains moisture really well, it has a really, it's bundled together, makes a lot of sense. As you start to age, as you start to see the visible signs of aging, you start to see lines and wrinkles, or you start to see a change in your skin, how it hydrates, it's, it's not hydrating as well, and you start to see these cracks in the collagen, right? So, you know, a wrinkle is an absence of collagen. Just think about it that way. So, when you're thinking of, oh, okay, I'm starting to see lines and wrinkles, I'm starting to see visible signs of aging, and we know it's collagen depletion, why don't we just take collagen, stick it on our skin, and, you know, it'll fix our skin. That's not how it works. First of all, collagen is a very large molecule. So if you were to take collagen from a plant source or animal source, um, what happens is the molecule is very large. So it will sit on your skin. It will help with the hydration of your skin, but it won't fill in lines and wrinkles. So what can we do alternatives to helping with the collagen of our skin? First of all, formulation wise, I'm gonna talk about peptides. Peptides are one of the things that have been, you know, released since 1998 and they talk about, you know, micronized peptides, micro, uh, micronized collagen peptides, Matrixel being one of the most popular or the most famous trade names. There's the oligopeptide, pentapeptide, a tripeptide. So what peptides are, just think about as peptides as amino acids and they're strung together and they can be three or five or seven long. And these are fragments, pieces of collagen. And the best way I can describe it is, if you remember the movie Jurassic Park, and when the scientist comes out and he talks about how they took dino DNA from, you know, that mosquito that was in the amber, and they took that piece and they recreated it and they filled in all the missing pieces. This is how I always think about a peptide, right? So basically, pep your collagen is a very large molecule, and because it's very large, what they did is they chopped it up into these peptides. So they got a fragment of peptide, and it's called the messenger peptide, in the sense that what happens is this fragment of collagen sits on your skin. Remember, it's supposed to be a long sequence, but because it's only a piece, it's kind of open on both ends. When it sits on your skin and your skin has receptors, what happens is, your skin sees this as a broken piece of collagen. In other words, it sees it as a wound. And what happens is then the skin goes into repair mode. So the skin, the fibroblasts at the lower level of the skin, they see this broken piece of collagen on the surface, which is a peptide, and that stimulates all of this type of reaction. So this is what's great about collagen peptides. So this is one way of boosting the collagen. Utilizing collagen peptides or messenger peptides or protein peptides or signaling peptides. There are various ones in the marketplace. There are various ones um, that you can formulate that are being formulated with. Not all of them are as effective, but they do seem to support and stimulate the natural collagen production. So in essence, it's sending a, big, a signal to your skin, telling your skin there's something wrong, okay? Something's going on and your skin needs to go into heal or repair mode, and therefore it increases in activity, it's fibroblast, it creates more collagen, and slowly from the bottom up, the collagen rebuilds or is reignited. So the empty spaces are filled in. Another way to boost your collagen is by staying out of the sun or utilizing sunscreen. The sun in the UV loves to chew up, eat up, denature collagen. That's the protein that it really wants to really address. Even, even free radicals, you know, oxidative stress, like to attach and break break apart collagen. So utilizing antioxidant, utilizing sunscreen, 
doesn't make more collagen, but prevents your collagen from decaying or declining or degrading as rapidly. So that's really important too, because sometimes, you know, just making more is not the answer. The answer is also keeping what you have in really good condition. Another is uh, for, for boosting the collagen is really, uh, really getting into really good sleep hygiene. Really good rest, they call it, you know, beauty rest, is not a myth. Sleeping increases a lot of the growth, back, growth hormones and that's really going to help with your collagen quality. It's going to help with your collagen in general. So it's important to get the right amount of sleep. Uh, it's important to have that beauty rest, to have that downtime. The other thing that's very important to boost a collagen is a high intensity type of workout. That also has shown and proven that that increases your circulation, it increases um, to probably the nutrients and the energy within the body, therefore feeds the, the connective tissue better, therefore works on the collagen. Because remember, you know, it starts from the inside out and we're gonna get to diet too. So it's, uh, you know, it's gonna be diet, exercise, sleeping habits, those are very important. Diet, that's really important for collagen production. You really need to think about your diet in a very, very healthy way. So bone broths are really good for collagen because there's a lot of nutrients in there that help with the collagen production. Also, if you don't want you know, to go that route or you want also other alternatives, I'm a huge fan of greens, veggies, raw, fresh, in season. That's really important for collagen building. So a healthy diet, an in-season diet, not too much, you know, try to stay away from refined foods, try to stay away from things that are too sugary or too salty, try to stay away from things that are processed. You want things that are, are that actually have a nutritional value. You want your food, you know, I always believe food is medicine and you, you need to eat properly. You need to drink water, good quality water. You want to be able to have a lot of greens, you know, raw nuts. You want fresh fruit and vegetables. Try to eat in season. That's really important too, that these are the building blocks of collagen. Think about this. Your skin, you know, you, they, you know that saying, you are what you eat. It's really important to think about that, what that really means, because it's true. You are what you eat, because what you eat and digest, it starts working in your body and starts building your cells and building and feeding. And your skin starts out as a liquid, so it's literally the liquid of what you're eating processed through your body and then comes out as your skin once it gets that job to do. So what you're nourishing your body with is very important. We talk a lot about the topical, but there has to be a program. Part of it's going to be lifestyle. It's going to be, you know, nice healthy habits, staying away from things that are dangerous to the collagen, also using skincare. Just wanted to insert a couple of other things regarding the collagen because I think it's important to address. Other things that you can do to help with the collagen are treatments such as laser treatment or microneedling or thermage. Now these treatments, one done properly and professionally, and I'm not a big fan of doing these kind of treatments at home, um, especially when we're talking about microneedling, um, and that's because of the irritation factor and the bacteria factor. But these treatments, when you do them professionally, and you do need to do a series of them, but what they technically do is they cause injury at various levels, deeper levels of the skin, and that promotes a repair mechanism as well. So these are usually treatments that you do when the other things, you've tried everything else, you have a really great lifestyle, diet, exercise, you know, you, you're using your sunscreen, you're using your collagen peptides, and you still need more, then this is where you can go and start doing some of these treatments that are a bit more invasive. And what they do is they create other kinds of holes, if you will, or trauma at different levels. And it's, it's strategic. That's why it's important that it's done professionally. Strategic trauma, and I don't do these. I, I learn from watching doctors and do this. So I'm not a doctor, you know, I just formulate but I can explain to you what is happening. And as they do this trauma, the skin goes back into that repair mode. That's why I like the peptide, the messenger peptide so much, is that remember what, what we said right at the beginning, 
The messenger peptide works because it's a fragment of collagen, and usually it's a, a fragment of pro-collagen type 1, I've been told. It's a fragment of collagen, and the skin sees it as a wound. So it's this wound element that these other treatments cause that then stimulate the collagen. Because remember, we're designed to survive. So when we have a trauma, our body will go into fixing that trauma. So when we have a cut, it goes into fixing it, goes into repair. So even if we don't have a cut, but we've caused trauma at a deeper level of the skin, therefore the, fib you know, the fibroblasts will start moving in and start creating that collagen to fill in and to heal, right? So this is something that's very important. So I just wanted to talk about uh, insert that little bit about what you can do professionally as well to boost your collagen. Another good thing and the last one for boosting your collagen is in intermittent fasting. So it goes along with, with uh, the food, but intermittent fasting has been proven to help with longevity, helps with boosting growth factor, helps with hormone balance. There are so many benefits of intermittent fasting. Usually, you know, a, 16, a 12 to 16 hour break between meals has shown to really help with our collagen, with so many other things as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to boost collagen. And you see there's many, many roads to dealing with the collagen question and how to work with the collagen. So you've got many different ways of enhancing. There's so many things you can do right? So if you start doing one of these things, you know, 1% better every day, you don't have to do all of them. But keep in mind, all of these things affect your collagen, affect your skin, affect your health, affect you. And if you can, you know, I, I, I believe in just, you know, being 1% better version of ourselves today than we were yesterday. And I think that sets up the road to looking and feeling your best tomorrow and in the long term. I hope you enjoyed our discussion on collagen and things to do to help boost your collagen. If you like this video, like it and subscribe to our channel and please share. Look forward to talking to you soon.